All right, everyone. Hello, hello. Today for our herb of the month, we're going to talk about the good old jasmine flower. By the way, if you want to see these videos two weeks earlier, consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you not only get all these videos, but also recipe cards, uh, specific deity profiles, and lots of other interesting things to look at. Video tiers start at $10 a month, so definitely consider checking it out. So jasmine is one of those really nice like flowers for teas and fragrancing, other kinds of food items that I feel like we may take a little bit for granted because it's actually got some really cool properties to it. And given that this is cancer season right up here in the month of July, and that's a time of this water sign ruled by the moon, the mother of the zodiac, it's no wonder that we would pick a flower that's all about ideas of the divine feminine, right? So let's get into it. So jasmine actually does come from the Middle East, and in fact, the name we have for it, jasmine, comes from an Arabic word, uh, yasmin, which means uh, fragrant flower. And this is a very common uh, girl's name, right, yasmina, uh, and it's one that, again, really highlights that feminine aspect. This is a very important flower uh, in Middle Eastern cultures and in Southeast Asian cultures as well, too. It is one that has been grown from, like, you know, the Middle East to China, and kings especially would love to plant it around their palace because it had such a beautiful flower, nice fragrant smell, and it was something that could be used in all different kinds of tea, foods, right? You can make jasmine rice. It was all these different things that you could do with it. And specifically, actually, in, you know, Southeast Asian cultures like Indonesia, it was also considered a very important flower uh, in bridal ritual and bridal ceremony. This flower would represent that purity, um, eternal youth and eternal life, that femininity, motherhood, other, you know, sacred feminine aspects that were really important for women, uh, you know, to have during their bridal ceremonies. Women would wear these flowers in their hair, so on and so forth. It was often also used as a perfume too, right? Because again, it has that really good, um, just flowery, bright fragrance. And so obviously when you would wear it as perfume, um, that would kind of heighten your status a little bit, right? It would give that feminine appeal. It was used, you know, like any other perfume we use today. And overall, it's just another one of those flowers that people found really beautiful and they also found really useful. And in terms of culinary stuff, that's exactly where we're going with it. So in culinary uses of jasmine, the most often you're gonna see it used is tea. As you can see here, I have these whole flowers. These you can literally just pop into a teapot um, and make a cup of jasmine tea. And it's a nice herbal tea, no caffeine, nothing like that. It's literally just jasmine tea, which is really nice um, you know, for, for a lot of different things, right? And a lot of times though, when you do see um, jasmine tea, it's actually just like green or black tea that's been fragranced with jasmine. And this is like a long process. This is a, a very intense process of infusing uh, the oils and the, and the fragrance of jasmine into that tea. That's all fine and dandy. I do actually just have straight jasmine flowers, mostly because I use these as spell ingredients as much as tea, you know? <laughs> but because it has such a deep fragrance and like, you know, those oils that make it so distinctive, again, you can use it to flavor rice, right? You can make jasmine rice. You can make jasmine syrups. If you boil some of these jasmine flowers um, and, you know, add sugar to it, you can get a syrup. You can use it in baked goods and ice cream. Anything that would go with sweet flavors like honey or vanilla, jasmine goes really well, really well. And medicinally, jasmine is something similar to chamomile and lavender, right? In that it is really good for calming down the nervous system. And it also helps, uh, you know, with the antioxidants that are in it, helps release some good happy chemicals, right? Some dopamine, some serotonin. And when you drink this tea, um, there are some studies that suggest it can also help with your cognitive function. So it can help improve memory. It can help, um, you know, up your mood a little bit, uh, improve your focus, chill you out a little bit, you know, all those kinds of good things. Obviously it's not a replacement again for any modern medicine, but if you just need like a, a chill moment, a cup of jasmine tea goes a long way and it can probably help you get a little bit of a boost throughout the day, not a replacement for, you know, any kind of medicine or antidepressants, but definitely something that can at least help if for no other reason than it is a delicious cup of tea and full of flowers that make you feel a little bit better. Of 
course, when it comes to the magic, right? This, naturally, as we're in Cancer season, moon and water, that's what this is associated with. It's associated with moon and water, and it's therefore really good for spells that work love, work healing, emotional support, friendship, anything that you would want to, you know, build relationships with people and get closer to people. This is a really good herb. And notice how a lot of the things that can be used in are sweets. Sweet things, sugar, honey, these are the ingredients that are commonly used for attraction, especially in love spells. Honey and sugar and all these other kind of sweet things, sweet, sweet items, fruits, they're really, really good when it comes to attracting love, attracting friendship, um, attracting, you know, good vibes with other people, and also for self-love as well, right? So that self-love and that, um, you know, treating yourself idea comes through really strongly when you make things with, you know, jasmine flowers, when you make yourself uh, a sweet treat, when you make yourself, um, you know, even just something made out of fruit, right? When you use these kinds of things, you can also show it as a sign of love to yourself and build that capacity for self-love within yourself. So Jasmine is honestly, um, it's not the most versatile thing, but if you are looking to do a lot of love workings, if you are a love witch, if you do a lot of stuff like that, this thing I would imagine is kind of essential in terms of herbs because you can make so many things with it. You can add such a nice floral, almost bittersweet punch to what are otherwise very one note dishes like so you have vanilla ice cream. Okay, you can make vanilla ice cream and it's standard and that's fine, but you can also add a bit of complexity to its flavor when you add things like jasmine, or if you drizzle a little bit of jasmine syrup on top, right? In doing this, you will be able to incorporate this into a lot of other things that already have love in it. Vanilla is very good for love. Dairy and honey and sugar, these are all about fertility and wealth and abundance and love, right? Apples, peaches, any kind of berry, also very good for love and all of these things go together you'll notice actually if you look at culinary uh you know recipes and things the foods that commonly go together tend to be the foods that do similar things so if i look at like onions and garlic and all the savory flavors they go with they do very much similar things which is protection exorcism um you know gathering money and energy whereas things that are sweet they tend to have also a similar general theme together of friendship and love and um, beauty, right? So if you are doing any, you know, cancer season rituals, if you're taking a moment on a Friday to do a little bit of self-love, Jasmine will help you get there. And so I hope this is a bit of a helpful overview of just what Jasmine is, where it comes from, what it does, and how you can incorporate this not only into your magic, but into your daily life. So with all that said, I will see you guys next week for a bit of a kitchen demo on pierogies. And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your week. See ya.